Joining me now, Donald Trump Jr., Executive Vice President of the Trump Organization. Uh, Don, it's good to see you tonight. Uh, we just got excerpts of your father's closing remarks, which are going to occur in Pennsylvania. He's going to do a final rally in Michigan, but the real closing message um, is going to be with the people of Pennsylvania. One thing that really struck me of what he's saying tonight is this. Many people say that God saved me in order to save America, and with your help, we will fulfill that mission together. Don, that assassination attempt really did change him, even though he still can get angry. I mean, we all do. But it did change him in the urgency of this mission, did it not? I think 100 percent, Laura, whether you're someone of great faith or someone with little or no faith, I think everyone saw the failures of that day. Uh, they saw the miracle. I've been to a billion Trump rallies. I don't know that I've ever seen my father turn his head to look at a graph and numbers. It's just not what he does. There was definitely uh, another hand at play, and I think uh, the big man up top was looking out for him. I know he believes that, and I, I think we made a lot of people have a lot more faith, whatever level they had. Uh, in seeing that. Uh, I, it has to mean something. There's just not that amount of coincidence uh, in the world. It's just statistically impossible. Uh, it, it made me much more of a believer, and I was already pretty high up there. Don, uh, when you look across the American landscape today, there's an enormous amount of suffering. The suffering that's kind of laughed yeah. off and even laughed at by the left, or they think it's exaggerated. Everyone should be happy with what we have now. What's your message to the people of this country tonight, maybe who haven't voted for a while, um, that are still kind of thinking, well, should I even bother voting? Listen, I think you can change the disastrous trajectory that the Kamala Harris, Joe Biden regime has put us on. You had four years under Trump. That's why it's a unique election. It's not just a politician making a promise. It's a politician who's actually delivered and another politician who's been failing you for four years. No one can objectively say we are better off today than we were four years ago, Laura. People understand that. They see it with their own eyes. And it's why, for me, when I'm traveling all around the country, not at a Trump rally, but when I'm at airports or stores or somewhere in between, people this time of every walk of life, mm -hmm. of every race, of every religion are walking up to me saying, please, we get it now, fix this. So if everyone gets out tomorrow and votes, if everyone brings their friends, we can win this thing and we can win it outright tomorrow. What I don't want to do is delay it, let the Democrats play their games, win decisively tomorrow. You can have cheap groceries and affordable housing again, or you can have World War III, which is where the Democrats really want to take us. The fact that the Democrat Party has shifted so far away from their traditional roots should shock anyone. The elders of that party, the John F. Kennedys, the legends of the world, they'd be rolling over in their graves at today's Democrat yeah. Party. Understand them when they tell you who they are, believe them, and then go bring your friends and vote for Donald Trump tomorrow so we can end this nonsense once and for all. Yeah, it's, it's your country. I mean, you can't complain about it if you don't vote. Now, Don, it, there's one message from Kamala right. Harris that I want to share with you, her closing pitch tonight. Watch. Our campaign has tapped into the ambitions and the aspirations and the dreams of the American people. We are optimistic and excited about what we will do together. It is time for a new generation of leadership in America. I mean, she's not 30. I mean, <laughs> she's trying to sell Donald Trump's peace and prosperity as the old generation. If that's the old generation, I'm fine to stick with them. Yeah, the notion that Kamala Harris, who's been number two in charge of our government, is somehow an agent of change is laughable, unless, of course, you understand what it is, which is she is an agent of change for the worse. Everything is worse. We went from, you know, prosperity to poverty. We went from peace to war, all under Kamala Harris. And by the way, you don't believe me about her not being an agent of change. When asked numerous times what she would do differently over the last few weeks, I can't think of anything. Those are her words, not mine. So if you want another four more years of this disaster, you can vote for Kamala Harris. If you want to bring back the peace, the prosperity, the notion of America first, putting our children first, stopping the wars, go bring your friends, vote for Donald Trump, overwhelm the nonsense, make it decisive tomorrow, and let's get our country back on the right track once and for all. Don, as... Uh, the eldest son of President Trump, when you hear people call him Hitler and a Nazi 
and a would-be dictator, a petty tyrant, and that's just the nice things they said. Uh, what's your reaction to that, just as a son, as a person, obviously, given everything you know about him since uh, you were a little boy? Yeah. Honestly, it's absolutely disgusting. If you look at the people who he's helped throughout his life, if you look at the people who work for him, if you look at the people who show up in support of him, I'm like, these people who have been calling us Nazis and fascists, the people who are censoring us, the people who are trying to jail their political opponents, I mean, it's just classic Democrat projection, Laura. They call you everything that they themselves are. They accuse you of doing all of the things that they're actually doing. You know, it's not the Democrats that are under indictment on, you know, malicious nonsense, fined for paying back loans, uh, censored, suppressed, smothered. It's them that are doing that. It's the Joe Biden, Kamala Harris regime. It's their DOJ actively doing this each and every day. And not just to my father, but to millions of Americans around this country. It has to stop. It's absolute insanity. And it's disgusting. But honestly, for me at this point, I'm used to it from them because yeah, they always talk about, you know, when we go low, they go high. Yeah. They never go high. They always go low. They just have a big tech and mainstream media industrial complex that's willing to lie for them like they've been lying to the American people for the last four years. Donnie, your father might be watching right now before he walks out. He tends to do that. I've seen him do that. What's your message to him tonight after this long campaign? Listen, I'm just really proud of him. I'm proud of the resolve. I've always been proud of him. I mean, he's done incredible things throughout his life. But what I saw on July 13th, when he got shot in the face and came back defiant, still ready to fight for our country. I mean, he literally took a bullet for America. That's who I want leading our country. That's who I want negotiating trade deals. That's who I know will keep the dictators and our enemies at bay. That's who's going to create a prosperous America, not someone who can't handle a single question uh, from the press, not someone who's been asked the same things and doesn't bother right. to come up with a talking point about what she would do differently. Enough is enough. I'm really proud of my father, and I'm looking forward to him being back in charge and fixing all that the Democrats broke in our country once and for all, Laura. Don, it's great to see you. Thank you for spending time with us tonight, and good luck tomorrow. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.